Good day everyone, Ducktablab here, and welcome to the last day of Spook Nights. And as we have already went through some spooky places, it is only fair to make good on this season's namesake. For this video, I will be focusing on our beloved operators, or rather, the five I believe to be the most frightening given their personality, past actions and impact on the world as a whole. So buck it up everyone, this is Arknight's Top 5 Spook Nights. However, I would like to make something clear. I do not think spooky and scary to be the same as dangerous and violent. Thus, characters with volatile personalities and a stated body count will not be taken into account. Neither characters yet to appear, nor from parallel timelines. So as much as I did like to any of the more dangerous circus here, I would rather focus on characters who are as much of a fright to have around rather than dangerous. With only one exception, this being... While she is of the dangerous kind, Lappy checks a lot of boxes I will consider makes a character spooky, with a far from stable mind, violent list of acts, and her callet hatred for Siracusa. She's one bad day short, or a makeup spree, from becoming Terra's very own Joker, a perturbed mind since childhood who was more built and nurtured into the butcher she is today, and with a complete lack of restraint, a potential danger to everyone around her and more of a time bomb than a cockroach, one of the most dangerous maniacs in Terra, let alone the landship. Then why am I leaving her at the beginning of the list? Because, and fitting her own predictability, Lapland is anything but certain, better seen at the end of Il Siracusano, where she just decided to support Pichi Lampenan's idea out of spite for Signora Sicilia, not to mention how she shows mercy to Texas at the end of their duel, meaning that while she can be one of the most dangerous characters in the roster, Lappy might have enough clarity of mind to help those around her, even if it's just to mess with someone else, thus leaving her out of the higher spots if by a hair. Unlike Lappy, this one does have a more verified list of spooky actions behind her, creepy child, causing nightmares to those close to her, and even being a bad luck magnet to the point she needed to be set aside society, so she wouldn't hurt others. However, the reason for her low position in the list is due to how she is anything but. Shamari is a kind and independent child who cares so much for others that she didn't mind having to live on her own for literal years, playing the role others dumped on her without a hint of a grudge. Despite this, her reputation is 100% real, and must be treated with care as she could return to her role of the evil witch should she so decide. But considering her Eugenium training, the security net she has forging roads, and her new role in life as a role model among the children on board, Shamari's future would possibly be far from her terrifying past. Though I wouldn't be surprised if an alter of her takes eight route, at the Shamari of a timeline where she went full lair and terrorized the world. Another one for the list. This one is a bit tricky. It has been known and accepted that Operator Gloria is but another member of Rhodes' medical personnel, a former member of Victoria with a regular past and even simpler life now on board Rhodes Island, with the caveat of her having a second personality, the Epinomus Nightmare, self-serving, cruel and sometimes sadistic in her actions constantly trying to take permanent control of their body and gather as much of Reginium as possible for some yet unknown purpose. All in all, Gloria stands out as a poor girl suffering from dissociative identity disorder, yet making the best out of life. Except things don't properly add up. Gloria doesn't remember much about her past besides her family and medical training. Even the act of getting infected eludes her. Meanwhile, Nightmare is a mercenary name renowned for her viciousness and cruelty for at least months before their boarding, implying that Gloria might be the created personality if, big if, but if Nightmare is indeed the real personality and has some unknown plan ahead of her, Rhodes will be completely blindsided by her actions, should she ever put her plan in motion. Not to mention that Gloria and Nightmare by Addition is a master in hypnotic arts, meaning she could have been slowly gathering info all over the landship, and no one would be able to remember the unknown mole in sight, the enemy within. 
the fear of the possibility of being suddenly betrayed when you least expect it. This is what makes Nightmare such a terrifying presence, as not only is she dangerous on her own right, she could take her sweet time gathering what she needs before she strikes. If only I perfectly remember she even exists. This one is a bit of a stretch, as well as a placeholder, as Vena, while gripping her own right, is far from being this demonic entity everyone should be aware of, even when she's perfectly capable to scare the soul out of most individuals with the help of Annie. No, Vena is both a representative of a yet unknown faction in terror, the so-called Castle of Dreams. And while they have shown to be very professional and loyal to their respective duties, the fact there is a group of what I can only name fairies roaming around the bleak land of Terra only fills me with dread. Have you ever read this? As mentioned, those from the castle can be considered as evil, but what about those beyond their walls? If they are based in folk tales of old, then I can guarantee you there will be those who care not for the rules of mortals, not out of malice, mind you, but because for them, it's just their nature. There could be sprites cheerfully kidnapping children out of whimsy, beasts hungrily hunting for their next meal, or witches with sorcery so known that it could leave the best of art users speechless. As with Nightmare, this entry is not so much for what we can see before us, but the possibilities beyond, the forever fear of the unknown, disguised with fairy dust and sweet dreams. Personally, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get to see this realm in the future. My money is on an IS. We have seen maniacs, witches, and the fear of the unknown. So as without, as of within. So why, you are asking? Why is she, a mere scientist, at the top of the list? Because, while you can argue everyone before can be frightening on their own right, they all seclude themselves to their respective realms. Not with Dorothy, as in the pursuit of her goals, she's out to have her horrors front and center not in some unknown corner of the world, but in the middle of a big city, adding as many personnel as needed to move forward, and even endangering the whole city once its true power was unleashed. But again I hear you saying, this wasn't her fault, she didn't want any of this to happen. It was the greed of those lusting for the possibilities her work entitled. To which I answer, she knew. She knew perfectly well what her creation could be used for, and still went with it as it was a worthy price to pay for success. Having been for the efforts of Rhodes operators who managed to convince her otherwise, Dorothy's project wouldn't have continued as planned, as the results justified the means. As a matter of fact, and if you read Dorothy's files, you will realize she doesn't regret having done what she did. If anything, it sounds more like she regrets being caught and being called wrong. Of all things, being considered in the wrong is far worse for her than everything that happened. Like the previous entry, Dorothy not only represents herself, but also every scientist in Terra hyperfixiated with their work, with their goal, their so-called greater good. Because in their minds, they can't be wrong, they have science in their sight and the betterment of mankind in their sights. Of course it can't be their fault others abuse their inventions, for that is the thing. For all the fear we can have for the supernatural and unknown, there is nothing more frightening than those walking into hell, fully aware. Or as the old saying goes, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. And Dr. Dorothy Franks proves this more than anyone in this list. Now I am become death. Or so I say. But what do you say? Um, think. What do you think? Do you think there could be someone more frightening than those listed here? Be sure to mention it down below, so we can see who could be the scariest character in Rhodes Island. For now, it is time for this little event to come to a close. And bid farewell to the season of frights, as next comes the season of charity, gifts and bonds, so I should better get ready for it. For now, this has been Dr. Block. 
thanking you all for your time, and wishing you all a warm autumn. And until next time, stay healthy everyone.